So some of you may recognize our stunt cam from previous videos where we threw it out of a tree and across the shop and out on the lawn. But today we're going to use it to illustrate the most basic of camshaft terminologies. And we're going to do this because we have a lot of guys on this channel that are just cutting their teeth, they're just learning the basics, and sometimes I feel it like we neglect them. So okay, let's do something to give you guys uh, all the, the basic things you need to know about a cam. And then you can take that information and figure out how to tailor yours best, right? So uh, let's start with this. Let's start with the most basic thing, the lobes. All right, so the lobe is broken up into three sections. You've got the base circle. When the lifter is on the base circle, the valve is completely closed. You've got the nose. When the lifter is on the nose, the valve is completely open. And then in between, you've got the ramps. And the ramps are what separate the different types of camshafts. Generally speaking, a hydraulic cam is going to have the least aggressive ramp. A solid cam, because you don't have to worry about the hydraulic cushioning or, or, or the, the lifter being collapsed, can have a more aggressive ramp. Get the valve open quicker and closed quicker. And then a roller, because the roller can follow the contour of the lobe that much closer, can have the most aggressive ramp. So, those are the basic differences in the lobe. Now, you've got duration, right? Wait, first we have lift, okay? Lift is taken, it's a measurement taken at the valve when the lifter is on the nose of the cam. So basically it's as open as the valve is gonna get. So if you've got an engine, let's say the camshaft's a 500 lift cam, it means the valve is open 500 thousandths of an inch or half an inch. That number is given, when, when you order a cam, that number is given based on the stock rocker ratio of your engine. So let's say you've got an engine with 1.5 rockers, that 500 lift is the lobe lift of the cam, plus or times the rocker ratio is the total lift. And then you've got duration. Duration is given in two different ways. There's advertised duration and there's duration at 50. So advertised duration is the instant that the lifter comes off the base circle and onto the ramp until she follows all the way across the lobe and the lifter settles back onto the base circle. That's advertised duration. And then there's duration at 50, which is a more common number. In fact, some manufacturers don't even give you the advertised duration numbers anymore. They just go duration at 50. And that number is taken from after the lifter has left the base circle and the, and the valve is cracked open 50 thousandths of an inch until the cycle is complete and just before the lifter returns to the base circle. And again, the valve is at 50 thousandths of an inch. And they do this because different types of camshafts have different clearance ramps. Like for instance, a hydraulic cam has a very smooth clearance ramp. That's where the, that's the transition period or the transition area between the, the base circle and the ramp. A uh, solid cam has a more aggressive clearance ramp. So those numbers are going to be a little bit different. And also because I should say those numbers right off the base circle are going to be a little bit different. And also because flow through the valve at less than 50 thousandths of an inch is almost inconsequential. So that's why that number is given. All right. Um, okay, so then we get to uh, some, of the, some of the more defining characteristics of the camshaft. Um, overlap. So now keep in mind, all of these measurements are given all of these all of these terms are with the number one piston because all camshafts are all this, they're all spec off the number one cylinder number one cylinder at top dead center exhaust stroke remember number one when the cylinder is at top dead center of the compression stroke both valves are closed there's no measurements to be made top dead center of the exhaust stroke both valves are open and that's your overlap period so Here's an intake lobe and here's an exhaust lobe from this engine. And that overlap period is when the uh, intake and the exhaust are both cracked off their seat. And this is done to give the scavenging exhaust pulse a clear shot at the intake through the chamber during that uh, top dead center exhaust. 
and this is to initiate the pull of the intake charge into the chamber before the piston starts on its way down and draws in the mixture that way. Along with overlap you have what's called the LSA, the lobe separation angle. So that's, if you look at these lobes, right, the closer they are together, right, the lower the LSA number, the further apart they are, the higher the LSA number. And here's what you know, need to know about this. A lower LSA number, uh, is uh, that, those are your choppier cams. They have low vacuum at idle, lumpy idle, right? But they have extremely pronounced torque characteristics. Longer LSA numbers like 110, 112, 114, those are your smoother idle cams. Uh, they're more suited to daily driver type of cars with uh, power brakes and whatnot. But the, that's one of the really defining aspects of the camshaft's personality. And then you've got advanced and retard. So not all camshafts are ground symmetrically, but fa most factory cams, most of factory cams, uh, have that overlap split. At, top dead, at, at the top dead center point. So both the intake and the exhaust valve are open the same exact amount at top dead center. When you advance a cam, you're causing that overlap period to happen ahead of time. So basically, if you're going four degrees advance, it's four degrees and crankshaft degrees before the pistons hit, piston hits top dead center. If you're going to retard a cam, it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be after the piston leaves top dead center. And generally speaking, you advance a cam to increase bottom end power and you retard a cam to increase top end power. So that's just one of those tuning variables. And when you order a cam, a lot of them have the advance actually ground into the camshaft. So when you put it in dot to dot, it'll already be like two degrees advanced, four degrees advanced. Uh, so that's it. But anyway, those are, those are, only, those are your basic terms uh, and, and, and the hows and whys of the camshaft. Now you'd have to do your own homework to figure out which setup is going to work, what what dynamics are you looking for in your engine, and now it gets a little bit complicated. But I think if once you've got these terms out of the way, once you understand those basics, the voodoo kind of disappears a little bit, and you can you know make a, a, a good decision. So I think that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.